I am. I'm Sabrina from GBO, your women's gay review channel, where you give honest reviews on travel gear for women by women. But of course, everyone is welcome. Today, we are doing a comparison on the Knackbag Series 1 medium and the Knackbag Series 2 medium. Okay, so let's get into the summary of these two bad boys. First up is price. The original Series 1 knack bag comes in at $235 and the Series 2 comes in at $265. The Series 1 boasts on the outside custom resistant, water resistant, 1200 denier two-tone body inspired fabric and has also been tested on loads up to 40 pounds. So the bonus of this material is that it is super tough. Inner material is custom stain resistant antimicrobial 150D nylon fabric lining. The Series 2, however, has taken a step away from the suiting inspired fabric and gone for a more chic look with a 420 dernier high density nylon fabric. They have switched it up for a 480 dernier ballistic nylon for enhanced wear characteristics and this material is also waterproof. The inner material is custom stain resistant antimicrobial 150D polyester for the lining. So nylon is generally stronger material so they have taken a little step down in the series too in terms of the quality of the lining. So time to get on to dimensions. First up, Series 1 knack bag. The height of this bag is 19 inches, as you can see. The width of it is 12 inches and the depth of it is 4.5 inches. However, this does expand to 9 inches. The good thing about these two bags is I'm not going to have to repeat myself because they're actually the exact same dimensions, unexpanded and expanded. So the capacity for the Series 1 is 27 litres unexpanded and then it goes up to 39 litres when expanded. Moving on to the Series 2, this is 24 litres when unexpanded and it goes up to 35 litres when expanded. So although they are the exact same dimensions, unfortunately you do lose a bit of capacity with the Series 2. So on to colours! So for the Series 1 it comes in the option of indigo blue, which we have here. You have the choice of Stealth Black and Savile Grey, whereas for the Series 2, you have the option of Steel Blue, Midnight Black, Alloy Grey or Olive. So in terms of the shapes, colours and aesthetics of this bag, with the Series 1, it's much more corporate, quite stylish. I would say much more of a professional backpack, whereas the Series 2 seems to have toned it down a little bit and tried to go for a more cool, sleeker look. With that being said though, I do have to say with the Series 1, although it is a bit more of a professional and neater look, it definitely still isn't boring. Still keeps it professional, but fun. In terms of aesthetics, personally I prefer the Series 2 backpack, just because it's still kind of casual, but also professional. Um, whereas I feel like the Series 1 is a bit more professional. And in terms of the interior lining, um, I am one of the majority that does prefer the Series 2 just because it's toned it down a little bit. The only reason why the Series 1 has quite a bright lining is actually so you can find your stuff a lot easier. However, with the Series 2, although it's not a bright colour, there's still these light colours, so you still can find your stuff without it being too in your face. I also feel like the Series 2 is a little less chunky and just has a nicer shape to it. However, that is totally down to personal preference. So moving on to the warranty. Has Knack got your back? No pun intended. God. So although there's not a lifetime warranty that brands such as Osprey and Patagonia do, where if anything goes wrong with your bag, you can send it back to get repaired or replaced, they do have a 30 day free trial and that also includes free returns. So before we get into the battle of these two bags, there are some extras that you should know about. So for both of these backpacks, you can get Knack Pack's very own packing cubes. So basically they're expandable as well and it just means that um, you can organise your bag really easily, expanded and unexpanded. I did use these for the week and I found them super, super helpful. So personally, I think they're worth the investment. However, if you don't want to, that's totally up to you. 
On a side note, you can also get a compressible shoe bag. So it just basically means that you can shove your shoes in there, compress them down, and you know that your clothes or your suitcase compartments are not gonna get dirty, which is great. You also have the option of a adjustable waist strap for the large version. However, just to clarify, that is only the large version of the series one knack pack. Okay, so let's run through the features of these backpacks. So for the external features, we have a top handle on both of these bags and they are identical with the mesh and the positioning of them. The Series 2, however, goes a little bit further by adding another handle on the right side, giving you the option of holding it messenger style, whereas the Series 1 does not. Personally, I was pretty impartial to this. However, it was nice to have the extra option of the second handle. So moving on to the front of these bags is where things get juicy. As you can see, these bags have two very different designs. The Knack Bag Series 2 introduces us to just a straight up front compartment. However, the Series 1 has a lot more tricks up its sleeve. So let's start from the top of the front of Series 1. We have a fleece lined pocket followed by a custom fabric lined pocket behind it perfect for sunnies or any gadgets you don't want to get scratched. There's two zips that you can hide behind this flap, but these unzip to reveal a debit slash credit card organizer with a pocket behind it. You can also fit your passport or something else in a bigger pocket behind. The fabric inside this little triangle pocket also is RFID blocking, which basically means any of your bank cards that have an RFID chip in it, which is about five to 20% of credit or debit cards will not be able to get skimmed. So all of your money is safe and the same with your passport as passports generally do have an RFID chip in it with your details on. So whilst I love this, I do however have a slight gripe with the fact that they've gone through the effort of getting RFID blocking fabric. However, the simple fact is that you can't actually lock this front pocket. So although someone can't skim your bag, they can quite easily open the front of it, which isn't great. Um, especially when they have really considered security. I feel like this is a little bit of a letdown, unfortunately. So the Series 2 has basically made just one front compartment, which consists of all of the pockets that are already on the Series 1 on the front, but just sort of separated and dotted about. So first thing to notice on the front compartment of the Series 2 is that it has lockable zips, which is great. So this definitely shows that they have taken this design flaw into consideration and improved it. So you might be wondering though, what about that super cool fabric that's RFID blocking? Don't you worry, because this also has it. So the whole of the interior fabric on the front section of the Series 2 is also RFID blocking. I still kept the options that the Series 1 have, but added more. As you can see, we have the mesh pocket on the outer side, which I use to store all my cables and laptop charger. On the opposite side, we still have a fleece lined pocket followed by a custom fabric lined pocket. All array of pen holders, which I love and read, etc. Moving over, there are two wider symmetrical pockets that have an additional pocket on the front. I found myself storing camera batteries in these. Further down, we have a pocket slash bag divider, which I found really useful for keeping in my books and notebooks. So comparing the two, I definitely found that I had more storage options in the Series 2, just because they had compacted everything, meaning you had more pockets to choose from. Moving on to the bottom of these bags. In the Series 1, we have a pocket at the bottom of the bag. As you can see, there is quite a lot of space here and it has elastic loops to store your cables and organize them. And you can also fit a laptop charger in here, which I found quite handy. So this is where the Series 2 differs. Instead, they've used different fabric on the bottom to reinforce it for enhanced wear, just as the bottom of your bag is where you are probably gonna get the most wear and tear. One thing to also note for both of these bags, because they do have the extra zips inserted for the expandable part and the suitcase compartment, is that both of these bags have quite a good structure and when you actually place them up by themselves, generally they do stand up, they can tip over quite a lot, but if you pack stuff in there, it's gonna sit by itself. Okay, so moving on to the middle compartment of these bags. So things pretty much stay the same in this area. As you can see, both feature a mesh pocket on the outer interior side. 
The Series 1 being a little more generous in size. We then have another mesh pocket on the other side that is zippable. As you can see, the Series 1 has placed their keychain in the main compartment compared to the Series 2 in the front compartment. After use, I personally feel like the Series 2 functions better with the location of the keychain, just as I usually want my keys to be quick access, but I also know that they can be safe with that lockable, uh, those lockable zips. Whereas with the Series 1, it kind of feels like a bit of a faff having to go into the main compartment, especially if you've packed your bag um, like trying to get your keys is a, is a bit trickier. So as you can see in the series one it does have a false bottom just as the space in the bag is a bit bigger whereas the series two does not have this. This is mainly because the series two is a little bit more compact and feels a bit more cramped from, uh, for space just because it doesn't have that nice big open compartment. One thing to note however, the Series 2 has got rid of the little side fabric bits that the Series 1 does have opening on the main compartment, which I always found myself getting zipped up um, or like jamming, so that's quite nice. Moving on to the star features of these backpacks is the expandable suitcase compartment. As you can see here, the tucked away expanding zips are still the same design on both bags and it definitely works. Moving on to the actual suitcase, the Series 2 has decided to keep the compression straps and mesh pocket, although they have reinforced the mesh this time with adding a lining layer over the bottom of the mesh pocket, whereas the Series 1 doesn't have this. You can still fit the same amount of stuff with the packing cubes unexpanded and expanded with these. They've kept the signature hidden water bottle compartment on both bags and both can fit a water bottle size of up to 26 ounces. With this design staying the same, you still do lose a little bit of space in the main compartment. However, it just depends on how you decide to pack your backpack. However, if you prefer the aesthetics, it's not really that much of an issue. The one main difference in these two backpacks is that the Series 2 has hidden a very, very sneaky pocket in the trolley sleeve. So much so that I spent about 10 minutes trying to find it and I eventually had to watch a YouTube video to locate it because the website gives nothing away which is a great sign for security or probably a worrying sign for me. So the thing that I liked about this hidden pocket is when you're carrying cash abroad and things such as your passport, um, I pretty much had all of my ID that makes me a human being. So it was quite reassuring to know that I could really discreetly tuck that away and it's super, super easy to access. Um, so this was a major bonus in my eyes. It also meant that I didn't have to keep on locking away stuff in the front section of this bag. This is something that I really would have liked to have seen on the Series 1 as there aren't many lockable compartments on this bag. Um, and it'd just be nice to have somewhere very, very sort of discreet and hidden to keep all of your personal important documents. So both of these backpacks have a laptop compartment that fits a laptop up to 15 inches and they are both located in the same place. So as you can see, it's sandwiched in between the trolley sleeve and the back of the backpack. So at first I wasn't too sure about the location of this, just as if you do use a trolley sleeve it means that those trolley arms gonna be, are going to be up against your laptop. However, they both do have sufficient padding, unfortunately not a false bottom, but it doesn't really need it just because the padding goes all the way round. Um, and as long as you're not trying to ram your backpack on your trolley arms, I hope you should be totally fine. This is one thing I love and I'm glad that they kept from the series one just because it is so easy to access your laptop with the medium backpacks. Also, side note, extra security just because it is on your back. You can make sure no funny business is going on because you're going to feel it. So now we are moving on to the actual back of the backpacks. As I mentioned before, they have kept the trolley sleeve for both of the designs, which means that you can fit your backpack on your suitcase trolley arms horizontally. I personally thought that this was a really thoughtful design and I'm really glad that they kept it. As you can see, the back memory panel is memory phone EVA on both the series one and also the series two. So still the same material, which to be honest, I am very disappointed in. So where did this disappointment come from? Basically, I tested this in hot and cold climates for both bags, um, Scotland and also Italy. So two very different climates and also in different places of Italy, it was like really hot or really cold. I've got to say that these bags made my back really sweaty. And that was, like I said, hot or cold climate, also with or without a coat. So for about half an hour, I'd say roughly, it was fine, comfortable enough. Um, however, longer than that, it's gonna get uncomfortable. 
which I think is something that I really would have liked to have seen in the series two, just as it's the upgraded version. This could easily be solved by having a mesh back panel. I do see that the memory foam panel does add structure and it adds quite a lot of padding to protect your gear. However, comfortability is really important and I feel like it hasn't been prioritized here. So now that my rant is over, I will show you the deployable backpack straps. So this feature is the same for both bags. The only difference being that the storage for the straps on the series one is a flap covering the lid, whereas the series two has a zip to make things a bit more compact and neater. The zip is definitely nicer but both function equally as well. For the backpack straps these are both the same design so nothing has changed with these which means that unfortunately the outcome was the same for both of these bags. After a while the backpack straps do become quite uncomfortable. Both of them do have the detachable sternum strap however so that does help a lot um, but there hasn't been anything really changed in the design to increase comfortability. So just to give you a quick demonstration, if you're thinking about buying either of these bags, this is how you attach the backpack straps. So to attach the straps, you simply deploy the backpack straps and then attach them to the metal clips to the plastic clips in the left and right hand corner of the bag. So as I mentioned before, I was really disappointed with the back panels. Basically, it meant that I was getting absolutely no airflow to my back, even though it is low R insulation, it definitely didn't feel like that. I also found for both of these bags that my shoulders started aching quite quickly, especially when there was quite a lot of stuff in my bag. The sternum strap did help. However, it'd be nice to have the option of a waist strap, just as both of these do go up to roughly 40 liters, um, which is quite a lot of stuff to carry. So on the topic of sternum straps, this is the one good thing that they have 100% done is that sternum strap and the placement was super comfortable. Um, I feel like they've definitely considered how it would feel and how it will look on both genders. Just as I've worn some bags with sternum straps and not been inclined to actually wear the strap just because they were horrific in comfortability and also the placement of it. So I definitely say for the sternum strap, this passes the female body test, which is great. However, that being said, it's kind of bittersweet because although it was great, comfortability is still not great. So rounding up the comparison of which bag you think is basically better. Personally, I found that the Series 2 was a lot better out of the two bags, mainly because they've zoned in on the organization, which makes it really easy to use. I did notice though the loss of space from the jump from Series 1 to Series 2. However, both of them do have an expandable suitcase compartment, so it's not a major thing. A small niggle that I had with both of these backpacks was the hidden water bottle compartment, just because it does take up a lot of space. However, I do also appreciate that because this is an expandable bag, having the water bottle on the outside perhaps would look a bit weird. So it's not a major thing, it's more just sort of aesthetics, um, but it does mean you have to pack your bag a little bit more thoughtfully. So something to bear in mind with both of these backpacks is the water resistance. So I can confirm they are both water resistant. However, the Series 1 took a little while to dry, so basically it would get little water speckles on it just on the top layer, but they did take a little while to dry, whereas the Series 2 really took the water resistance in its stride and all of the water droplets simply just rolled off, so there's no need to wait for your bag to dry, which I really liked. There is definitely also a difference in security of these two backpacks. The Series 1, I feel, is lacking this. However, the Series 2 has definitely been improved with lockable zips and hidden pockets. So if you wanna go for security, I'd say Series 2 is probably your best bet. So if security is not really the main focus of getting a backpack for yourself and you prefer the suiting inspired look, definitely go for the series one. However, if you do value security more and maybe a bit more water resistance and the aesthetics of it, series two is probably your best bet and also for the organization. Just to round it up, I personally enjoyed the series two a lot more in terms of all of its features. I'd say that both of these bags are still more geared to just a day-to-day -day every bag that you can double up as like a gym bag or something like that and would definitely suit someone in a corporate lifestyle. Just if you need to go away for a day or two on visits or perhaps if you like weekend visits this would be a good choice for you. I think in terms of travel I'm still not quite convinced on both of these just because of the comfortability of it however I would say that if you do want to go for one of these bags for travel series two is probably your best bet just because of the security features. So that is our comparison video on the series one medium expandable backpack and the series two medium expandable backpack. We hope you enjoyed the video and if you did why not join the GBO community and hit that subscribe button.
Thanks so much for watching. Hey guys, I'm Bradley and this is Kazzy. We are from Dream Big Travel Farm. And we are running weekly gear giveaways in collaboration with Gear by Orla. And if you want to be in with a chance to win, then hit that subscribe button and go to the first link in the description to join the newsletter. Be sure to check your inbox every week to see if you are that week's lucky winner. We'll see you there.